Succubus is understood as a Lilian demon in female form or supernatural entity that appears in dreams to seduce men, usually through certain activity. According to religious traditions, repeating this activity with a succubus can cause poor physical or mental health, even death. Succubi can be traced back to folklore of medieval times, but there are modern day succubi that you can certainly play with. Hello YouTube and welcome to Demon Month and the next episode of Cosplay and Crime. Today's tale of murder is a tale between two lovers. One being an entertainer, a dancer like myself. She seduces her prey, reels them in with her beauty, and then kills them like a modern day succubus. This story involves everything you humans love. This, lies, greed, a savage disgusting crime, and of course a beautiful, blonde woman. Today's story is the murder of Jay Orban. Let's start from the beginning with a woman that Jay Orban would soon marry, a beautiful showgirl named Marjorie. Our story takes place in Arizona. When Marjorie was 18 years old, she was told that she could never have children, which was extremely important to her, but since she couldn't, she wanted to live life to the absolute fullest. And she decided when she heard that news that she would only be responsible for herself, her own life, and she was going to get the absolute most out of it for herself. So so she danced, she traveled. Her motto was work hard, play harder. And she did because by age 35, she was married about seven times. Marjorie was a busy gal. According to Marjorie, she went into every relationship that she had looking for her Prince Charming. She was really into this fairy tale of a relationship. And obviously these seven guys were not giving her that fantasy that she wanted. While looking for her Prince Charming, this princess decided to get a little X rated and become a stripper. And many of you who think that sex work is still a taboo type thing and just don't respect it and think it's just like trash probably think otherwise but Marjorie says that she never felt disrespected. She felt more empowered and that she would never do anything that she would be afraid to tell her mom. And dancing was one of those things that she wasn't afraid to tell her mama. Marjorie worked at many strip joints and at one of the businesses she got to know one of the regulars, our boy Jay Orban. According to friends, Jay was loving, had a huge heart and an all around 26 year old Nice guy. He did have real good personality and he was funny. He was definitely interested in me and was pursuing me. And in my demon head, that means that she didn't find him physically attractive at all because if she did, she would say that. But that doesn't matter to us sucky buses or suck you by. Whatever. I'll eat your soul and your body. Anyway, so Jay was pursuing Marjorie and after a couple times, she eventually said yes. Boom. He asked her so many times, which means that he had so many chances to run. But he didn't. The pair went out dancing, having drinks, and they had a really good romantic time. Did Marjorie finally find her Prince Charming? Hmm, not so much. So Jay was in love. He was mesmerized by everything about Marjorie, but Marjorie wasn't really feeling it. She wanted a more glamorous life and girl was only 24 and wasn't ready to stop doing whatever she was doing. But Jay was a very nice guy and she really didn't want to hurt his feelings. She just wanted to kill him. Just kidding, we're not there yet but we'll get there. So Marjorie didn't want to hurt his feelings, but also wanted to get out of that specific job. So she decided she would just leave. She went back to Florida and reconnected with the man who became her ticket to the life that she wanted. Excitement. It was perfect. His name was Michael J. Peter, a multimillionaire who made bank. Sunshine State multimillionaire, Michael J. Peter. I've known him since I was 17. And then when I went back to Florida, I began to work for him. Michael had upscale clubs around the world, y'all. He was rich. Eventually, they traveled all over the world and had very romantic adventures. Peter made Marjorie his star dancer and choreographer in his clubs and gave her a featured role in the movie, No More Dirty Deals. They lived together for years and eventually got engaged. Engagement number eight. My girl's racking him up. But Marjorie was starting to get a little jealous. She even admitted that the industry is very hard to be in. And someone that you love has girls climbing all over them all the time and offering him everything 
it's difficult to take. Eventually, the multiple girls Peter's constantly wandering eye at the multiple girls led to the couple's breakup, and Margie traveled back to Las Vegas. While she was in Las Vegas, she got a random call from a traveling salesman, and that man was Jay Orban. She hasn't seen this guy for about 10 years now. How the heck did he find her? Well, Jay, while he was traveling in Las Vegas, ended up seeing a billboard with the girl that he fell in love with 10 years ago and fell in love all over again, just from a billboard. And side note, ooh, girl, you got a billboard? You famous. Anyway, he said that he saw her picture on the billboard and then asked if she wanted to go out and have some drinks, just like old times, 10 years ago. And Marjorie agreed. These two spent all night together talking, having drinks, snacking, laughing, and just having a great conversation. So the next day, Jay ended up traveling back to Phoenix, but they had such a good time, the relationship continued. Now, many people were very confused about this relationship. They said that Marjorie and Jay were complete opposite. Jay was more of a low-key, not very attractive, simple type of guy. And Marjorie was very showy. She was a showgirl stripper, so you know. Marjorie said that people like to paint us as polar opposites, but really, we are not. We have the exact same ideals on everything important. And she said the most important thing to her anyway was having children. And Jay had a hoo-ha. He also wanted kids. He was extremely obsessed with her and didn't have a wondering eye. And since her main goal was to have children, boom, bam, done. She picked Jay. It was a no-brainer. Jay told her the only thing he had ever wanted was a wife and a child, more than anything in this world, and he wanted her to come to Arizona. He continuously said, please, I will do anything you want. Hooked, lined, and sinker. So she accepted. Plus, within those 10 years that Jay and Marjorie didn't see each other, Jay really improved his finances, which is another thing that's important to Marjorie. He was now the owner of a successful Native American arts business, offered to pay for fertility treatments as long as Marjorie would marry him and move to Phoenix. Sounds a little like weird. <laughs> Listen, I'll pay for everything you want. Beautiful house, utility treatments, clothes, vacations. You need to get on a plane now. Marry me now and be here in Arizona with me in my house now. So Jay's mother, Joanne Orban, was not fond of this chick that her son was obsessed with. She didn't trust her. She didn't think that she was that pretty and she just didn't like her. I couldn't believe that my son was bringing her into the house and saying he was engaged to her. <laughs> Were you impressed by her? Not really. Ah, you know, they should have led with the billboard. Joanne, I like Joanne by the way, she knew what was up from the get-go. But she said that Marjorie was beautiful, but not as beautiful as she thinks she is. Like, damn, don't mess with Mama Joanne, she'll tell you the truth. But Marjorie said that Joanne was just jealous, jealous of the extreme amount of love that her son gave to Marjorie. According to Marjorie, he catered and accommodated her in every single way. Honestly, I think if I was Joanne and I had a very like sweet, very kind natured son and that he was obsessed with this chick and did everything for her, catered everything for her, bought her everything and she, you know, you can kind of see that she's just not really into this relationship, kind of in it for ulterior motives. It's like when you have a friend and they start dating this person and they're doing everything for them. Going to the moon, making extravagant meals, collecting all the infinity stone, everything and the other person isn't doing the same, not putting as much effort into it and you're kind of like, maybe dial it back a little bit. Why are you doing so much for that? According to Minnie, there was a lot of tension and even Jay would notice it, but let it slide. He just wanted to get married. And so the two eloped in a little white chapel on Las Vegas Boulevard. The day the opposite pair got married, Jay's brother gets a call and it's Jay and he's excited. He calls me up and says, hey Jake, I met the sweetheart, love of my life, and uh, we got married. According to the brother Jake, when he visited from San Diego to Arizona, he said that Marjorie is the most perfect housewife. She cleans, she fixes everything in the house up, makes sure it's like appropriate, makes all the meals, and the two seemed very loving toward each other. He didn't understand what the mom was talking about. Everything looks fine to him. But we all know how like guys notice things, they don't. And like how women, like we really notice things. That's why women are succubi and men get eaten by the succubi. So what about the thing that was very important to the couple, the most important thing ever? Having little fledgling goblins, you guys like to call them children. The two started fertility treatments and they were really taking a toll on Marjorie, so much so that they were making her very sick. But she wanted a baby so bad that she was willing to go through with it. But I was willing to take the bad stuff with 
you know, in hopes of having more chance of having a child. She didn't care that she was getting sick and she wanted to stick with it, and it paid off because eventually they got what they called a miracle baby. Marjorie and Jay had a baby boy named Noah, and she said it was the most important day of her life when she held her son. Well, it seemed that everything was going great. Two people that reconnected after 10 years, they hit it off, Jay's business is doing great, they get married, she's a perfect housewife, the fertility treatments worked, so they have a son, everything was perfect until it wasn't. September 2004, after Marjorie spends 10 years in a hot Phoenix. Sorry y'all, I live there. 120 degrees in the summer, Woo! That's enough to kill you right there. Anyway, after 10 years of being in Arizona, a tragic, according to Marjorie, incident occurred. And her life and the whole family's life changed forever. Thank you, mommy. Being a mom. You're welcome, sweetie. You like it? Mm -hmm. A wife, a business partner, that all ended in September of 2004. It's August 26, 2004, and it's Noah's, their son's birthday. Unfortunately, Jay had to leave and travel to Florida the same day, so he watched Noah blow out the candles, he kissed his little boy goodbye, and was gone. And that was the last day that Noah would ever see his father again. That was the last day that anyone at that party would ever see Jay again, except... Marjorie. So from the start of Jay's trip, it was bad news bears. Hurricane Francis was tearing everything up, just effing everybody's day up. And Jay was like, yeah, I don't think I want to mess with all of this. So he just uh, called it quits and headed on home, where there was going to be another dangerous ass hurricane named Marjorie Orban. So speed on up to September 8th, Joanne, mama, called her son while he was driving into Phoenix. It was his birthday and she wanted to tell her son congrats on making it to the big 45. He said he would talk to us later, but we never heard from him. So a week passed and Joanne still didn't hear from Jay. She was very, very frantic and Marjorie kept saying that she's overreacting. She's like, why are you freaking about your son who said he would call you back like a week ago? So Marjorie was acting very shady besides the fact that she was not even bothered by not hearing from her husband for a week. She also told people that Jay came back to the house and left on another business trip. I've seen him. He's fine, you idiots. Calm down. Stop freaking out. He's alive. Scouts honor, however you do that. Well, another week passed and now friends and family were like, well, what the absolute Marjorie? Call the police. And she finally did. Detective Jan Butcher was on the case. Detective Butcher asked Margie to provide information on the license plate of the vehicle that Jay was driving and she never got back to him. Mm, she keeps racking up those suspicious points. So Marjorie was quickly becoming a person of interest. First rule, at least lie about the license plate. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you guys how to get away with murder. So Butcher finally talked to Marjorie when she finally picked up. I just kind of get the feeling that you're really not available and willing to, to help us out, try to locate you where... You get that feeling, huh? Try to see you say that. <laughs> Okay, odd response. Anyway, Marjorie then drops a bomb on the detective and told him that the couple were actually legally divorced for tax reasons, but they still live together as husband and wife. Okay, makes sense. Not shifty at all. Yes, because I'm not running around crying and, and, and hysteria mm -hmm. does not mean that I'm not concerned and not doing anything. Which, okay, I guess everyone deals with things very differently. But if I wanted to find my husband, I would probably pick up the phone, give him the information, that they were asking, not avoid them, you know? Anyway, as the days go by, Marjorie is looking more suspicious and more suspicious. She was blowing thousands of dollars in days, purchased an almost $12,000 baby grand piano and raided $45,000 from Jay's business account. When asked why she bought a piano, she replied with, There were a number of things that I did that may not make sense. I was in a daze. I was in shock. I mean, I might decide to buy a grand piano if one of my family members went missing. Maybe that's just how she copes. But it wasn't just the odd spending spree that had Detective being like, mm, Marjorie, we're watching you. They wanted to schedule a simple polygraph with Marjorie and she said, She wants me to take a polygraph tomorrow. You're Probably not the best thing to say, but anyway, during that call there was a male voice. You're that the detective heard in the background. And that male voice was Larry Weinsberg, a production manager Marjorie met at the gym while she was getting that body right. I was having an affair. I shouldn't have been doing that. After that, the investigator was like, bro, 
Did you kill your husband? Well, we're gonna find out and get a search warrant and ask the SWAT team to deliver it. He ain't playing around, Marjorie. This ain't no strip club no more. So the whole thing was recorded. The SWAT team came to Marjorie's house. Broke down the door, and when they broke down the door, there was Larry Weinsberg at the house, ready to fight the whole SWAT team. Who on approached them and everything. No, 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 Larry, you can't do that. They tased his ass. He didn't move, so one SWAT team member tased him. His body just plopped on the floor, and then they continued to smash his face. This ain't the gym, Larry. The SWAT team don't play. So it was kind of funny, because Marjorie said that whatever was going on with Larry, the tasing, the plopping on the floor, the smashed in face, she didn't care. All she cared about was that she saw these men carrying guns going down the hallway near her son. I was focused on is I see big, huge men with things drawn heading down the hallway towards my son's room. I mean, there's a child down the hall. There's a child down the hall. Don't scare my son. So once the raid was over, the investigators said there was evidence that Jay did come home, but he never left. Numerous credit cards belonging to Jay Orban that he always takes with him on his travels his business checkbook, which is always in his briefcase. And this was no longer a missing person investigation, but a homicide. And now they need to find his remains. Six weeks after Jay went missing on October 23rd, 2004, police finally found Jay Orban's body or what was left of it. The detective said as they walked up, all they smelled was death. And what he saw was horrific. He had never seen anything like it. Police found a torso, just a torso, a few miles from Jay and Marjorie's home near Tatum and Dynamite Boulevard. The torso, a single bullet, were neatly packed in a Rubbermaid container. Phoenix police say his body had been frozen after his death and an electric saw was used to cut through the remains. Joanne, Jay's mother, received the call that she feared the most. The body found was indeed her son's, and the investigation now turned their attention to Marjorie. They think the murder was money motivated and Marjorie was obsessed with money. Obsessed with getting Jay's money, and in order to get Jay's estate, she needs a death certificate. So they theorize that she put the body near the house so people would find it, and boom, the estate is hers. But Marjorie heard that and said, what if I was going to get rid of a body, I wouldn't put it in my own backyard. I'm not an idiot. Unfortunately, Marjorie could not keep her suspicious behavior at bay. Three weeks after finding Jay's body, police detained Marjorie for forging his signature at a Circus City store. During questioning, she claimed she was just replacing business computers the police had confiscated. During the questioning session, they told her that this is now a murder case. And when police asked Marjorie, hey, what do you think happened to your husband? She said, mm, I have absolutely no idea. None whatsoever, don't know. So Detective Barnes wasn't the one doing the questioning, but he then comes into the room and shows her the remains of her husband, the, just the torso, and she flips. So. We'd like to know where the rest of Jay is. Oh God. Okay. Oh. I think you know. Detective Barnes is looking at her while she's freaking out like, girl, we know you killed your husband. Stop playing around and doing all of this theatrical Tell us the truth. She kept up with the story that she had no clue what happened. She didn't do anything. She knows absolutely nothing. He said, you know what? You're going to jail tonight for credit card fraud. And she did. She was released later that night, but the evidence continued to pile up against Marjorie. Investigators found receipts for mops and cleaning products purchased one day after Jay went missing. She acid washed the garage floor, then coated the floor with epoxy, which completely erases any trace of blood. But the icing on the cake of evidence came on September 10th. Two days after Jay went missing, Marjorie was caught on camera at Lowe's hardware store buying two containers with Jay's American Express card. The exact containers that they found Jay's torso in. Boom! Case closed. Well, not according to Marjorie. According to Marjorie, they have it all wrong. She was framed and trusted the wrong person. Marjorie said she aided and abated someone that she should not have. She's paying the price and that person isn't. And who is that person? Oh, you probably guessed it. The crazy guy that tried to fight the whole SWAT team? Larry Weisberg. So now Larry is also a person of interest. So pretty much what the detective was thinking was that Marjorie was obviously having an affair. Maybe Larry wanted her to leave Jay and she said, no, look, we have a kid. I can't leave Jay. We gotta keep you, you know, on the back burner, on the side, my little side piece. And Larry got tired of being the side guy and he took it in his own hands. Or they both were in it together and they both wanted the money, so kill him. She gets the money, 
and so does Larry. Police eventually searched Weisberg's home and vehicle and made a very intriguing discovery. He had access to Jay Orban's garage. He had a remote in his vehicle that let him in and out. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, but they had enough on Marjorie. And on December 6th, six weeks after her husband's dismembered body was discovered, police arrested Marjorie Orban and charged her with Jay's murder. They handcuffed Marjorie right in front of her child, which she really didn't like. A girl, you, you murdered someone. You don't get treated like a princess like the man that you murdered used to treat you when he wasn't just a torso. So Noah the son wants to go live with the brothers since his dad is now dead and his mom is now going off to jail. And then listen to this, the prosecution gave Larry, the guy that got tasered, immunity. So whatever he says can't be used against him in court. And they did this so they can get more information out of him. It's not fair. I don't like that. I feel like he was a very viable suspect. But for some reason, they wanted to only focus on Marjorie. For a very long time, Marjorie didn't say anything about Larry. Because according to her, Larry said if she said anything, he would kill her son, Noah. A good person has unnecessarily lost his life. And a coward ass piece of is willing to let me take the fall for something that he caused. So basically Marjorie's saying that she has absolutely nothing to do with this and it was all Larry. Larry's saying he has nothing to do with it and it was all Marjorie. And the fight for Marjorie's life begins because she possibly could be getting the death penalty if everything played out the way that the opposite side wanted it to. Marjorie's attorney even asked her if she's interested in a plea deal and she said, I will never let my son hear me say that I did this to his father. I'll let them kill me first. Well, in court, the defense got right to the point and said, Larry did it. And the prosecution said, mm, nope. There is nothing in this finger pointing defense that ties Larry Weisberg to the murder of Jay Orban. And this is just another one of Marjorie Orban's lies. All of the forensic evidence points to Marjorie Orban. Larry Weisberg was just another boy toy, another person to manipulate that Marjorie Orban used. Jay Orban was someone she hated. What does the owl say? She found him disgusting and she wanted him dead and she wanted his money. Larry got called to the stand and called Marjorie a seductress. She grabbed my hand. Why don't we go into the bedroom? And said Marjorie was increasingly desperate after Jay's body was found. She said, I'm scared. I'm real scared. I want to run away. I want you to come with me. And I said, what? Larry was asked, does he know what happened to the body? And where he responded, absolutely not scouts honor. He said he had absolutely no involvement, but when he asked if he was a truthful man, he said, nah, to a certain point. So that means sometimes you will be truthful and other times you will not be truthful. Is that correct? Yes. And now, after hearing Larry on stand, the lead investigator even said, Hold up, now I got some questions for Larry. Maybe we should look more into this guy? He was kind of thinking if he's crazy enough to attack a whole SWAT team, he could totally attack one guy in a garage who probably can't even fend for himself, along with disposing a 280 pound body, which Marjorie most likely couldn't lift on her own. Hmm, maybe somebody messed up which I think they did. Detective Barnes said evidence that may have inflicted Weisberg was never tested by the Phoenix crime lab. Where did they drop the ball? With some hairs. Hairs that were found on the tub. Why? Why was that never tested? Who got paid off? Apparently though, there was a huge amount of forensic testing done in the case and they were able to exclude anything recovered from Larry's home that would tie him to this murder. I know for a fact Marjorie was involved. I don't know for a fact that Larry was involved. Is it possible? I think it is possible. And everything that we were allowed to test, Eliminated Larry. During the trial, only one person spoke kindly of Marjorie, Michael J. Peter, who contacted her prior to all of this craziness. Like, while her husband was still alive and not just a torso. He described a kind, gentle Marjorie who would never have killed Jay for money. Uh, keyword for money. She'll kill him for other reasons. He even told the jury that he offered to support her and Noah if she came back to him. And she said, There's nothing in the world I'd rather do than be with you again, Michael, but Jay's a good man. I would never take the father from the child or the child from the father. So now it's Marjorie's turn to take the stand, but her lawyers advised her that she just shouldn't do it. There was no eyewitness. There was no murder weapon. There was no definitive forensic evidence. They thought they had it in the bag. There is no way that they're gonna say guilty. Wrong. After an eight month long trial, Marjorie was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. We the jury do unanimously find the defendant guilty 
Signed by the four-person juror number 15. Years later, Marjorie came out with what she calls the truth of what happened to Jay Orban. Marjorie said Jay had come home early while Larry was still at the house and found Larry there. Confronting SWAT team Jerry confronted Jay. He shot Jay and Larry disposed of the body. She saw nothing. Never saw the body, the gun, nothing at all. You could have done the right thing and you didn't. I was afraid to. I was scared. scared I was of scared what? for Larry. I, for one, I was scared for Larry. Scared I didn't want him Larry, to get in yeah, trouble. Her stories just don't add up for me or anyone else. Well, I guess for the Michael Millionaire guy, but nobody else. One minute she knows that her husband is fine and on a business trip, then the next second she doesn't know anything that happened, then she did, but Larry said keep her mouth shut or he's going to kill her child. And then in this one she says she didn't want Larry to get in trouble, like protecting him. Girl, what? She's just all over the place. So that's the story of the stripper turned housewife turned murderer question mark. Do you guys think she did it? Or do you think Larry did it? Or do you think they both had something to do with Jay Orban's death? The fact that the both of them say that they know absolutely nothing that happened is just very suspicious. Anyway, when I was cruising the World Wide Web, I found out that you can send letters to Marjorie. It just reminds me of Love After Lockup, like those people that literally seek out people in jail to become friends with or uh, Lovers. Growing up in Miami, Florida, the sunshine and water were a big part of my life. Playing on the beach, diving, sailing, horseback riding. The little girl in ballet class was the start of a lifelong love of dance. I enjoyed a wonderful career of dance and choreography. From Disney World to cruise ships to Las Vegas shows, even dancing and music videos. Motley Crew Girls, Girls, Girls to name one. Traveling all over the world, I had many exciting adventures. Then one unforeseen incident unfortunately changed everything. Doing my best to be positive and productive and to create a meaningful life for myself are my goals. I am healthy, super fit, I work, teach aerobics classes, and read. I miss traveling the ocean, good food, interesting friends, and romance. I would love to make new friends from the real world. So my lovely audience, will you be Margie's friend? And better question, will you be mine? Sometimes it burns. Sometimes it hurts when you say my name, but thinking of hers, I don't want to know.